There was once a president of a country and he chose to reach out and overreach and he chose to seize executive power under mandates. There was once a a country that felt intimidated and allowed its a group of people to have quote unquote peaceful demonstrations after a felon had been unjustifiably murdered. And those peaceful demonstrations were riots. There was once a country that allowed that organization to then fly its flags next to the federal buildings and the embassies. And there was once a country that decided that it needed to create an agency that would prevent what they call disinformation. And that country is not the United States, it was Nazi Germany. And if that scares you, it should. There was a man named Horst Vessel. Horst Vessel was a thug, a felon, a pimp. He was killed. He was a communist. He was killed. I'm sorry, he was a Nazi. He was killed by communists. Hitler and Joseph Goebbels decided to make him into a hero. They then used that as the excuse to have peaceful demonstrations, which actually were the brown shirt and brown boot riots. The Nazi, or not the Nazi, the German Republic, the Weimar Republic, was so intimidated by this group of Nazis that they allowed the Nazi flag to be flown over federal buildings alongside the German tricolored flag. The president of Germany, the duly elected president of Germany, who was in his 80s at the time, Paul von Hindenburg, allowed his advisors to convince him that he should create executive mandates, mandating his people to do things. People were scared to respond. And then with his friend, Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's friend who became chancellor at, I don't know how you know this, Hitler became chancellor because Hindenburg appointed him as an executive action. And Joseph Goebbels became the minister it was originally called of social and cultural education and cultural enlightenment became the name changed to the minister of propaganda propaganda and cultural enlightenment i have made a life's career out of being very careful about hyperboles and not using them what happened this past week terrified me and i don't scare easily okay, what terrified me is the Mayorkas and the Department of Homeland Security decided to say there is now a governing board of disinformation run by a former wannabe theater actress who sang a song, Who Do I Have to Sleep With? She used a different word in order to get famous and have power. She videotaped herself. And then it's a sub agency of the Department of Homeland Security who have men working for them with guns, and it terrifies the daylights out of me. And I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican on the right or the left. As Jews, we need to be aware. It is the exact same purpose as, to, as what Mallorca's has defined is the exact same purpose as what Gables defined as the purpose for the Ministry of Propaganda and Cultural Enlightenment. Anyone else scared by that? Because the key from Judaism, from a Jewish perspective, we like dialogue. As Rabbi Shocha says, we disagree without being disagreeable. There's a whole passage in the Talmud about a dialogue between Reish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan. And when Reish Lakish horribly and tragically dies, the rabbis send other rabbis to comfort Rabbi Yochanan and 
Rabbi Yochanan says, this is true, and the other rabbis say, you're right. And he says, this is true, and they say, you're right. And he looks at him and he says, what do I need you to tell me I'm right for? I know I'm right. He says, God is infinite. With Reish Lakish, I would pose 14 questions, he would pose 14 questions, and together we'd start to understand infinity. We don't have to agree, we have to be agreeable. We have to hear the other side. This is the basis of Judaism. It's true when we say Judaism equals two Jews, three opinions, four rabbis, and five temples. The machlokas, the debate, is integral to Jewish theology and practice. I do not need to agree with you. And in fact, I want people in my life that don't agree with me. Because through that, I can start to understand something much greater than myself, can't I? So the idea of cutting off any form of information, of censoring anything, terrifies me. Because God is infinite. Judaism is not monolithic. And I have seen in history where that ministry of disinformation leads. So what do we do? Who else is scared a little bit about this? What do we do? And I think there's a few things to do. And I think we find them all in this week's Torah portion. You knew I'd get back there somehow. <laughs> By the way, did you notice that today was Purple Day with Matt? I had to lighten the mood a little bit. I disagree. Huh? I disagree. There you go. <laughs> but you're wrong, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, what do we do? Here's the reality. There are forces in this world that want to stop us from having dialogue, and that is dangerous. That's the danger. The danger is not that someone disagrees with you. The danger is that we want to shut them down. And that goes for both sides. I don't care if you're on the right or on the left. If you are hating the other side, you are missing the point. I got one heart. I don't have enough heart, a second heart for hate and one for love. I got one heart. Almost said that, right? Yeah. Rashid Tlaib wants me dead and hates me, but you know what? That anti-Semite, if she's clear about it, I don't hate her. I don't want her in power. I just don't want, I don't want her around me. I want to put her in a nice bubble of God's golden light and ask it to float far away. <laughs> <laughs> but I have no hate for her. We need to have dialogue. We need to hear the opposing views. We need that so we can become better, wiser human beings. Because otherwise the choice is to be silent and we know where that leads, don't we? Yes, we do. People do not realize the Nazi party basically started and got in control of their nation within a decade. And they did it through censorship, control of the media, control of education, control of the school system. 97% of teachers in Nazi Germany were a member of the National Socialist Teachers Association. And if you didn't go along with the stated curricula, which was a reformation of history, a rewriting of history, you were fired. 97%. I want to be able to have dialogue with people. I want to, because God is in there. I want to be able to have opposing views. And I want to respect them. And I want to understand my, my, the people that oppose what I say so I can become a better person. And so our job is to do the same thing. It's easy to succumb to fear, isn't it? It's real easy. When you hear an organization say, I, the individual or the organization, will determine what is hate speech and what is not, that is scary. I don't care what side you are. So what do we do? Well, the answer to fear, does anyone know what it is in Judaism? It's faith. Faith and fear cannot exist in the same place at the same moment. They're the opposites. That's the first thing. But how do you get to faith? faith? And here we come back to what we find out about Yom Kippur in our Torah portion. 
In the Torah portion, this phrase comes out, the people, it's the, the, the people of the golden calf, they're, they're partying, they're screaming. It sounds like war. It does. It sounds like war. Joshua says to Moses, the people are having a war. We have to get down there. Moses says it's not war. They come down, and what do they see? They see the Hebrews partying, having fun in an illicit way, but nonetheless having fun. They're making that sound that is made at Persian weddings. I'm not going to. Who can do it? Daniel, where's Daniel? You can do it, right? Try. Yeah, the lid. Can anyone do that? So they're, they're making that sound and they're part of they're having fun. And from this, we learn that actually that word does not mean when it says later on, that's the verb that's used to describe what they're having. When it's used that, that in that terms of Yom Kippur, it does not mean that you shall afflict yourself. It means that you shall be joyous. Yom Kippur is a happy day. We'll discuss that as we get later to the year, but it actually is. There's no question about that. All the great rabbis agree on it. It's one of the few things that is never discussed and argued about in the Talmud. And Yom Kippur is one of the two happiest days of the year. How could it not be? We're taught that the women would go out in white dresses soaked with water and dance. So Yom Kippur is happy. But, but there's a lesson in this, that the answer to war, the answer to fear, there's a lot of fear that we can legitimately have with the darkness going on in this world. Knowing that even for saying this in theory, this could be defined as hate speech, couldn't it? So what do we do with the fear? How do you fight fear? Well, you need faith. How do you encourage your faith? Joy. The work of God is found in joy. This line comes from one of the greatest warriors in Jewish history, King David. We are commanded to be happy. It is not an option. Why? Because when you're happy, it's hard to be scared, isn't it? If I'm happy and joyous, clap my hands. If I'm happy and joyous, then in fact, I don't have room to be scared, do I? If I'm happy and joyous, I don't have room to hate, do I? You know, Shlomo Kralbach of blessed memory, I did not know him. Matt worked with him for many, many years. Do you know that it was either after the 67 war or the Yom Kippur war, Shlomo Kralbach, Rabbi Shlomo Kralbach of blessed memory, went to the Israeli Knesset, the parliament, and he said, look, you've got this great army for war. You need an army for peace. So what I want to propose is I'm going to bring all of my hippie friends and beatnik musicians from San Francisco. Holy We're going to come over. Holy huh? Holy hippies. We're going to come over and we're going to go to all the Arab households and we're going to knock on the door and say, we want to play for free for your celebrations. You need an army for peace. Boy, if they had supported that and he'd gotten away with that, would the world be different right now in the Middle East? I think it would be. So how do we combat this fear, this hesitation about what's going on, the parallels I don't like to you say this. I have taken people to task for comparing anyone or anything to the Nazis, but the historical parallels to the Nazi development of, of the Nazi regime are a little bit too frightening. There are many of them. It's not one, two, or three at this point. There's like 15 of them that are specific. How do we combat it? We need to make an army of peace. Karl Bach was right. And we need to make that army by being happy. We need to make that army by singing and dancing. Because you know what? It's really hard to be angry or scared when you're dancing a horror. It's really hard to be angry or scared or want to censor anybody when everyone is joyous, isn't it? When we have a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, a wedding. It's really hard, isn't it? This is the lesson that we find. Even on Yom Kippur, when it's so serious, we must be happy. And so this is the lesson to fight this darkness is to stop messing around being melancholy, sad, or just how are you doing? I have a friend, every time I ask him how he's doing, you know what he says? Bear. Okay. Dear friend, I love him. 40 years I've known this man. We went to camp together. Hey, how you doing? Bear. 
Everything going well? Fair. <laughs> Waited one day for him to say, I'm really happy, or even if he said unfair, I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> Something. So the point is that how do we fight whatever fear? How do we fight with darkness? How do we fight any form of censorship? How do we fight, fight any form of conflict? We need an army for peace. We do it through song, through dance, through stories, through jokes. We do it by choosing to let go of our pain, our fear, and our worries, and choosing instead nafis simcha, joyous celebration. And my prayer for all of us is to no longer be scared of what's going on in the world, but rather my prayer for all of us is to choose being happy, having fun, enjoying ourselves, being grateful to God. No matter, I'm not going to tell the Holy Fixer story. It takes too long. But being grateful to God. Stop whining and instead truly be grateful and embrace happiness. This is my prayer for us now. For all of us. Amen. <laughs> Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it down. Oh, no, don't worry. Be happy. In every life we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Be happy.